And section three of your book talks about the growth stage and a sales team and how you used 10 profit principles to make consistent profits at one of your companies, USI. Right. Tell us more. I think a classic mistake that many entrepreneurs make is uh, they take the uh, position that my product will sell itself. And uh, maybe it's because I come from a sales background, but I'm not a real believer in that. I think uh, a product needs a dedicated force behind it, bringing it to the customer and securing orders. And uh, that can come in many flavors. That can be online, that can be mobile, that can be face-to-face. -face. But I think the idea of a product completely sells itself is really uh, the exception, not the rule. And uh, uh, so I, I, we've written a whole chapter around this concept of uh, sales as a contact sport, meaning we're making contact and we're going to create business together. So uh, I'm a big believer in the sales force. Uh, in regards to the 10 profit principles, I took a step back and asked myself, what really drove the profit of our business? And uh, we, the, the chapter's called The Ten Commandments of Profit. And we outlined 10 specific items that if you really wanted to flip the failure rate, 20% success, 80% failure, to 80% success, 20% failure, you would follow these profit principles. Probably one of the dominant profit principles is to organize your reward system around profit. If you organize your reward system around profit, then everybody becomes a profit and loss manager. And you're never faced with the issue of a product or a service being sold where it's being sold at a loss, but they still get a commission. If they're paid off the bottom line, both your sales force and your management team, then everybody across the organization is concerned about revenue minus expense equals profit. And if there's profit there, there's going to be some reward.